Swift Data Part 4, Custom Code. We're on our way to Swift Data, but we're still working with Core Data for now. Last time we generated Swift code for our Core Data models, and this time we customize that code. So in our running example, we have three entities, employee, location, and meeting. And for example, in meeting, we had two attributes, reason and time, and two relationships, attendees and location. And a couple of times ago, we saw that's persisted as XML. So here for meeting are the attributes, reason and time, and the relationships, attendees and location. And we pull back and see the rest of the entities described also. And so last time we decided instead of persisting the model as XML, let's use Swift code. And so Xcode generated six files for us, three pairs of two files. For each one, there was a core data class and core data properties. The core data class file wasn't very interesting. For example, for employee, this is all it was. But inside the properties file, we found that it had generated the properties for the attributes and relationships. And of course, not everything is shown here. So in looking at the generated code, we said that we wish there could be some improvements. For instance, better inits, fewer optionals, no special types, no NS set. In general, it should be more like idiomatic Swift. So for example, in this employee file, you see that we have an int 64. We don't want that special type. And here you see that string is optional. Why is it optional? And the default is to give us an NS set for collections. So we have plural meetings. And so we get an NS set, an NS set of what? So let's look at these three and let's start with special types. Here's my int 64 that I have for badge number. I don't want to deal with int 64s from my code. So I'll add a computed property named badge of type int and it'll convert the int64 to an int. So of course that's the getter, perhaps I want a setter as well, and in that case, I take my new value and I wrap it in an int64 before persisting it. And of course there's a chance that my int won't be within the range of an int64, so maybe we put an error handling, or maybe we just make sure that we transform it into something that can be persisted as an int64. So that's one way of hiding special types from the rest of our code. Up next, optional. We have this optional string and actually we have this optional NS set as well. And we can handle the optional string the way we handled an int64. We can create a computed property for it called display name. Display name has type string where name has type optional string. And so our getter is just return the name and if there is no name, if it's nil, return some default value of a string that we can display. And the setter is simple. We don't have to do any checking. Any string can be stored in an optional string. So that's one technique for dealing with an optional. Another technique is if the optional isn't really optional, if you want to require a name for employee and you can enforce it, just remove the question mark. This will work fine with core data. What core data means by optional and what Swift mean by optional are two different things. And so we should feel free to use an actual string as the type of name here, as long as we're sure that we will always provide a name. So that's optional. What about NS set? If you've never worked with Objective C, the collection types hold pointers to objects. So essentially they can only collect reference types. That's one problem. But another problem is we don't even know what this is an NS set of. So we can use the Swift set and say that it's generic in meeting. And now we know this is a collection of elements of type meeting. As for that optional, I would prefer that instead of having optional meetings, we always have a set, but if there are no meetings, that set be an empty set. So for the type, I'll drop the question mark and let it be a set of meetings and I'll enforce this behavior in my code. And so that for me is much nicer to work with than an optional NS set. So we've addressed fewer optionals, no special types, no NS set, and that leaves better inits. Here's some code that I used to generate previews of the content. And so I generated 10 meetings to display in a list. So in my loop, I'll create a new meeting. I'll add a time to that meeting using a random date function that I've just created. And I'll generate a random reason and save that in new meetings reason. And now I've got 10 meetings that I've created and I've configured. And now I try to save these. Now in core data, we work in a context. That's sort of our scratch pad. And so we do our work in a scratch pad and then we save our work. In our case, we're gonna ask the container for its view context and then create our meeting for that context. In core data, our objects need to be created in a given context, and then we save that context, or at least we try to save that context. 
Our code can get cleaner and more swifty and more familiar if we move that work to a custom init. And so I'll create a convenience initializer for meeting. It's a convenience initializer because it uses the existing initializer. This one allows me to specify the reason, the time, and of course I have to pass in the context. The first thing we do is call the designated initializer and ask it to create a meeting given that context. And then we configure the properties, self.reason is reason and self.time is time. And now in this convenience initializer, I'm gonna build in trying to save my work. And this makes creating new meetings much simpler. I don't need the try and the catch for the save there. And I create a new meeting using very familiar Swift code specifying the reason, the time, and the context. And that rounds out what I was looking for. That's better in nits. And that's what we do for core data because we don't have some of the nicer facilities. We've done a lot of the work to describe the model in Swift and make working with it more Swifty. And now we're ready for Swift data to do a lot of that work for us. And that's what we'll look at next time.